Is this what Eamon's blood has come to? Little people squabbling for the right to hide like rabbits. You have forgotten who you were. Forgotten what you were, but I had hoped some small part was left. Some memory in blood and bone. Some shred to steal you for the long night's coming. To the south lies the river you call the White River. But far to the east of here, men call it still by its rightful name, the Netherendrel. In the old tongue, waters of the mountain home, sparkling waters that once coursed through a land of bravery and beauty. Two thousand years ago, Manetherendrel flowed by the walls of a mountain city so lovely to behold that Ogier stonemasons came to stare in wonder. Farms and villages covered this region, and that you call the Forest of Shadows as well and beyond. But all of those folk thought of themselves as the people of the mountain home, the people of Manetherin. Their king was Eamon Alcar al Thorin, Eamon son of Car, son of Thorin, and Eldrain I Elan I Carlan was his queen. Eamon, a man so fearless that the greatest compliment for courage any could give, even among his enemies, was to say a man had Eamon's heart. Eldrain so beautiful that it was said the flowers bloomed to make her smile. Bravery and beauty and wisdom and a love that death could not sunder. Weep if you have a heart. For the loss of them, for the loss of even their memory. Weep for the loss of their blood. For nearly two centuries, the Trolloc Wars had ravaged the length and breadth of the world. And wherever battles raged, the Red Eagle banner of Benetherin was in the forefront. The men of Manetherin were a thorn to the Dark One's foot and a bramble to his hand. Sing of Manetherin that would never bend knee to the shadow. Sing of Manetherin the sword that could not be broken. They were far away, the men of Manetherin on the field of Bekar, called the Field of Blood, when news came that a Trolloc army was moving against their home, too far to do else but wait to hear of their land's death, for the forces of the Dark One meant to make an end of them. Kill the mighty oak by hacking away its roots. Too far to do else but mourn, but they were the men of the mountain home. Without hesitation, without thought for distance they must travel, they marched from the very field of victory, still covered in dust and sweat and blood. Day and night they marched, for they had seen the horror a Trolloc army left behind it, and no man of them could sleep while such a danger threatened Manetherin. They moved as if their feet had wings, marching further and faster than friends hoped or enemies feared they could. At any other day, that march alone would have inspired songs. When the Dark One's armies swooped down upon the lands of Manetherin, the men of the mountain home stood before it, with their backs to the Tarendrel. The host that faced the men of Manetherin was enough to daunt the bravest heart. Ravens blackened the sky, Trollocs blackened the land. Trollocs and their human allies, Trollocs and dark friends and tens of tens of thousands and dread lords to command. At night their cook fires outnumbered the stars and dawn revealed the banner of Baalsaman at their head. Baalsaman, heart of the dark, an ancient name for the father of lies. The dark one could not have been free of his prison at Shail Ghul, for if he had been, not all the forces of humankind together could have stood against him. Dread lords and some evil that made that light-destroying banner seem no more than right and sent a chill into the souls of the men who faced it. Yet they knew what they must do. Their homeland lay just across the river. They must keep that host and the power with it from the mountain home. Eamon had sent out messengers. Aid was promised if they could hold for but three days at the Tarendrel. Hold for three days against odds that should overwhelm them in the first hour. Yet, somehow, 
through bloody assault and desperate defense, they held through an hour and the second hour and the third. For three days they fought, and though the land became a butcher's yard, no crossing of the Tarandrell did they yield. By the third night, no help had come and no messengers, and they fought on alone. For six days, for nine, and on the tenth day, Eamon knew the bitter taste of betrayal. No help was coming, and they could hold the river crossings no more. Eamon crossed the Tarandrell, destroying the bridges behind him, and he sent word throughout his land for the people to flee, for he knew the powers with the Trolloc Horde would find a way to bring it across the river. Even as the word went out, the Trolloc crossing began, and the soldiers of Manetherin took up the fight again to buy with their lives what hours they could for their people to escape. From the city of Manetherin, Eldraine organized the flight of her people into the deepest forests and the fastness of the mountains. But some did not flee. First in a trickle, then a river, then a flood, men went not to safety, but to join the army fighting for their land. Shepherds with bows and farmers with pitchforks and woodsmen with axes. Women went to shouldering what weapons they could find and marching side by side with their men. No one made that journey who did not know they would never return. But it was their land. It had been their father's and it would be their children's and they went to pay the price of it. Not a step of ground was given up until it was soaked in blood. But at last the army of Manetherin was driven back, back to here, to this place you now call Eamon's Field. And here, the Trolloc hordes surrounded them. Trolloc dead, and the corpses of human renegades piled up in mounds, but always more scrambled over those charnel heaps and waves of death that had no end. There could be but one finish. No man or woman who had stood beneath the banner of the Red Eagle at the day's dawning still lived when night fell. The sword that could not be broken was shattered. In the mountains of mist, alone in the emptied city of Manetherin, Eldrain felt Eamon die and her heart died with him, and where her heart had been was left only a thirst for vengeance, vengeance for her love, vengeance for her people and her land. Driven by grief, she reached out to the true source and hurled the one power at the Trolloc army. And there the dreadlords died wherever they stood, whether in their secret councils or exhorting their soldiers. In the passing of a breath, the dreadlord and the generals of the Dark One's host burst into flame. Fire consumed their bodies and terror consumed their just victorious army. Now they ran like beasts before a wildfire in the forest, with no thought for anything but escape. North and south they fled, thousands drowned attempting to cross the Tarandrell without the aid of the Dreadlords. And at the Manetherendrel, they tore down the bridges in their fright at what might be following them. Where they found people they slew and burned, but to flee was the need that gripped them, until at last no one of them remained in the lands of Manetherin. They were dispersed like dust before the whirlwind. The final vengeance came more slowly, but it came when they were hunted down by other peoples, by other armies and other lands. None was left alive of those who did murder at Eamon's field. But the price was high for Manetherin. Eldraine had drawn to herself more of the one power than any human could ever hope to wield unaided. As the enemy generals died, so did she die. And the fires that consumed her consumed the empty city of Monetherin, even the stones of it down to the living rock of the mountains. Yet the people had been saved. Nothing was left of their farms, their villages, or their great city. Some would say there was nothing left for them, nothing but to flee to other lands where they could begin anew. They did not say so. They had paid such a price in blood and hope for their land as had never been paid before. 
And now they were bound to that soil by ties stronger than steel. Other wars would rack them in years to come until at last their corner of the world was forgotten. And at last they had forgotten wars and the ways of war. Never again did Manetherin rise. Its soaring spires and splashing fountains became as a dream that slowly faded from the minds of its people. But they and their children and their children's children held the land that was theirs. They held it when the long centuries had washed the why of it from their memories. They held it until today there is you. Weep for Monetherin. Weep for what is lost forever. <laughs>